Hello everybody, and it's Terry again, and you are watching another edition of An Orca Today. And today, I have a couple of things, mostly stuff related to poo. But the first thing is sort of an announcement. If anyone finds one of those, let me know. I need that. And that's all I'm going to say. Rustic spots. Show me where, or point it out, or send it to me. <laughs> anyway, another announcement is that I did mail off our project plans tomorrow. Today, I will be putting the emails out there with you guys' tracking, so you can be keeping uh, keeping aware of where your package is, and make sure you open it fast and read the little instruction card and. We will start the party then. That's that announcement. Another thing is um, this plant, which you know that I did that rot video. I'm not sure how well that it took I have been keeping it out of the light, keeping it in shade. I had thought that that eye was popping open. I'm not sure. I am kind of surprised that this cane here is still rotting away. I am almost thinking that I need to maybe, in fact, let me see what this looks like. save this part of the plant that seems to be not affected. I'm not sure about this one yet because I'm not just sure and I don't know if I want to risk it being that it's attached to where I want to cut it. So that's my dilemma on that and following that theme I want to do one more little lesson and I don't have to go that far but the tag is here and this is more or less on what to do when you get a new hybrid and you want to know what the culture is what the parents are uh, pretty much like what their environment is and how I do it is I use online orchids.com, not .com, orchids.org. And I use um, the other J, it's orchidspecies.com, that's what it is. And the question relates to my dividing this last year, which is my peach bird. And so the question is how to tell when you're giving this away to a friend, how would they know what culture it is? They can't mimic what my culture is because if I send it to, even if I send it to Northern Illinois, it's gonna be different because they're in a drought, but we're in a rainforest, pretty much. Well, we have been. So what you wanna do is you wanna find the parents. And this is ABC Mai Tai crossed with C. Herbert Osterich. And if you don't know, I will put up the orchids.org, which pulls up the genus, the, not the genus, but the, the um, plant and the family tree of sorts. So you can trace it, but I will tell you, if you can't read that this cross is Clandia, no, it's Arantiaca crossed with Bovendrana, so it is a Guariente. And you can also see that BC Mai Tai has Guariente Bovendrana as well. So, since you know that it is 
heavily by foliage, that tells you in a general way what the culture will be or how you should grow it. How I grow by foliage is I water them and they grow, start growing in the spring. And then once the growths are complete, then I back off and give them pretty much a almost a dry rest. They still get highlight, they still get um, warmth. They get less water, as I said, they still get that humidity. And their humidity drops in the late winter, early spring, and then they are given that 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 is when the onset of the blooms are for the most part. Boranjana is a different uh, blooming season. It actually is a bifoliate, but it blooms immediately from its newly completed bulbs. So it would complete its um, it would complete the growths, and the growths would mature in say um, late fall. And this is my Boranjana here, which is recovering, and it is a lately it is usually starting these growths as it is putting up it is blooming so it would be blooming or putting up its spikes or pushing forward the spikes this time because it blooms in the fall this is a fall bloomer never in time for a show but usually after the show or before but these pseudobulbs will will grow and then they will mature as i was saying the pseudobulbs will mature in the fall and then they will immediately put up their blooms in the, sh in the sheets that are produced in the axles. Then they get a little bit of a rest, but they're still growing that growth. If you understand what I'm saying. So anyway, as I was saying, Boringiana is one that is a bifoliate, but after the growth, it puts up the sheets and then it immediately blooms from the sheet. So... It really does not get a rest, but it does get a somewhat rest after it blooms while it is still growing the, the new growth. For next season, we do back off on the water somewhat. And that's just a tip. So in that regard, since you know that there are bifoliates and it's primarily nodosa, well, not necessarily nodosa, but it is primarily um, Boranjana, I've already sort of given you a brief, um, you know, talk about Boranjana, but that is Boranjana right there. You can see here it says it's an easy to grow species from Honduras, Guatemala, grows on trees and rocks near streams, two feet tall, suitable are swollen, flowers appear in autumn and winter. Really nice flower and I like it because the flowers are kind of small but it's lots of flowers in a cluster in the spikes. The inflorescence maybe get um, perhaps uh, at the most a foot tall. So it is a really nice display when you have several pseudobulbs that are together. So that is a tip on how to adequately provide the conditions and the culture that that hybrid peach bird wants that you can make a generalization based on the parentage and this has really adapted well to these mounts as I've shown let's keep it that way one other thing that I want to point out really quickly and I'm just going to go ahead and this is an area a little microclimate that I use for a lot of my encyclias that are recovering or resting Cat Liz, and this is my weak looking uh, Guiva, but it's got a little growth coming there, so I'm not so mad at it. This is Chiffon Smile, it's got growth there and lots of roots, you know that, what that is. But there are other things here. Today I noticed this. Now the reason that I put this back, these back here is because, number one, they get lots of good sun pretty much throughout the day. Um, and it is somewhat shaded because it is behind a shade cloth, although they do get a lot from above. Um, and another thing that, that, I, that this is a good place for is because there is literally nothing above these plants. So there is no risk of water 
tickling or dripping down on the foliage as long as you keep the dead foliage up but there is no nothing up to drip down which is usually a problem with these encyclias and other gross plants that are somewhat tender when they are putting up their growth susceptible to rot and that is why I moved this beauty over here which I am trying to save my Martin Wolf uh, because the leaves were turning brown as you can see and I did cut off some of the leaves and the pseudobulbs and put some dragon's blood on them to try to save the plant because it was rotting away and I just don't need to buy another one of these because I will um, but this is an area where I put these plants and as I was looking today I noticed this encyclia which had a new growth and I think this is probably uh, Kyoguchi um, <clears throat> EPC Kyoguchi so I think that this needs to be dealt with or else it's going to be dead if it is not already and what I'm gonna do basically is I'm gonna pull it out of this media and because it's been in that sphagnum and see that is the detriment of an encyclia. It will die every time. So I will deal with that and I've already said what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take that out of the media. I will put it in something bare root most likely or in lava rock and let it sit kind of like that in a shaded place and hope that the rot stops. I will. I might have to cut off some of these pseudobulbs because you can see it's starting to brown, but I think it is primarily the roots. If I can get them to dry, it might be okay. But in addition to this, I am going to show you what I will do with this once the moss gets off of it because I have some encyclias that are in need of potting up. This is another one that I found. You can see the bulbs are looking kind of suspect. So I need to get it out of this media that is holding too much moisture and put it in a drier, more coarse media. Encyclias like dry. They like dry and they will die if it's wet, too wet. So I'm cleaning most of the media. I'm really trying to save this part right here and I could just, I think I'm going to have to do that, pull it gently. Um, this one too. So you can see this is done. And so I'm just teasing it because you see there's a root right there which is with this and you know I could yeah that's what I was gonna say just get the other part off first and then deal with what I want to keep clean that up because I know that I'm not gonna want that and this is suspect as well as is these bulbs in here but for the moment, I'm going to get this one because it is squishy and still clean a little bit of these roots out as best that I can because I want this to be in a drain, free draining mix. So. These are tasks that I had to do, and I'm almost certain that that is going to not be good either, and will probably, although, you know, I don't know. I might just, hmm, I think I'm just going to leave it like it is. I'm gonna put it in here.
this done because it is going on lunch and I need to eat. So, just wanting to keep it in the pot steady like. Okay, so that is that, and here is the tag. Make sure I keep that tag, that was jungle orchid profusion, or was that jungle profusion, I think that's what it's called. And of course, like I said, I'm keeping it dry, as I would do the same thing with this. This is an orchid jungle here, and this is a nursery rhyme. Speaking of nursery rhyme, no, speaking of Phoenicia, which is still very cocoa. There's a speck right there. And it is. So, perhaps, perhaps, I don't know, it's a long way to go, perhaps we will get to compare fragrances, wouldn't that be special? Mm. I don't even like cocoa, I don't even like chocolate, I do like hot chocolate, not, co not chocolate, milk chocolate. Alright, anyway. Thanks for watching. Thanks for putting up with my rambling. Uh, enjoy your kids.